Good morning and welcome to All Saints, whether you are gathered here in the pews where it is blessedly cooler this week, or whether you are gathered at a, with, a, with friends and family around a screen, we are incur- we're enriched and honored by your presence this morning as we celebrate a wonderful baptism that's been held off for all too long. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one Lord, God of all of us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, Father, and all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church and because it cannot continue in safety without your help. Protect and govern it always by your goodness, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 78. We'll read the psalm antiphonally, beginning on this side of the congregation. So he commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down manna upon them to eat and gave them grain from heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. He provided for them food enough. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens and let out the south wind by the night. He rained down flesh upon them like dust and winged birds like the sand of the sea. He let them fall in the midst of their tents and round about their dwellings. So they ate and were filled, for he gave them what they craved. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, 
with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit. Just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all, but each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. On the next day, when the people who remained after the feeding of the 5,000 saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you're looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which a son of man will give you, for it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him when he ha whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it is not Moses who gave the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gave the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and give life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. We speak together in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus is a little skeptical, wondering why the people came to him. What signs are you going to give us? What are you going to do for us, Jesus? But Jesus knows that that isn't really the right question for his followers to be asking. Not what can you do for us, but what can we do for you? What can we give you? Some of his followers knew that. Think about the woman who broke the jar of costly ointment on his head to cool him, to make him feel better, to, uh, and then wiped, you know, washed his feet with her tears and wiped it with her hair. All those things that people say, what can I bring to Jesus? That is the question. Well, Today we have a good answer. David's bringing himself to Jesus. <laughs> yes, you are. You're being baptized today. You're bringing, you're bringing yourself and your mom's bringing you and your godparents are gathering. They're bringing you and you're here and your grandma. And all of us gathered are bringing David. And it's a good thing. We're not going to bite hard. <laughs> Lee. No, it's a day that we celebrate something new happening in his life. He's already a child of God, but now we're making him officially a Christian, but through this rite of initiation, we are going to be 
symbolically washing away the sins, spiritually washing away the sins. He's six. How much sins can he have done? But he's going to be completely new. And it's a wonderful thing. And so we are going to make some promises together. We're going to promise to try to resist Satan and the spiritual forces of evil. We're going to renounce. I taught David, we taught David this word, renounce, meaning just the kind of the opposite of announce, to turn away from the things that draw us from the love of God. And, you know, all those things. And we're going to recognize that Jesus Christ is our Savior. I say we because we all will be renewing our own baptismal vows, even as David and his godparents take the, his vows for him. And then we'll be stating what we believe. Do you believe in Jesus, in God the Father? Yeah, we wouldn't be here if we didn't. Are we absolutely sure? If your answer is, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, maybe, then you're in the right place. Because this is a place where we ask questions. This is a place where we can explore our faith. And that's why our answers in the baptismal covenant are, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? I will with God's help. Because we know that we can't do all these things just on our own. The Israelites couldn't have, didn't really have enough to eat. But God gave them manna, and he gave them the quails. He gave them what they needed for that day. And he gave them something more than the physical bread and the physical meat. He gave them the development of trust in him. Because there's a thing about manna, it's got no shelf life whatsoever. Manna does not last. There's enough for the day, but there's no leftovers. And so it was a, it was a learning process, learning to trust God. They trusted Moses to get them into the wilderness, and they said, what were we thinking? Why did we follow you? We were better off as slaves when we had plenty to eat. But they learned that they needed to trust God. I mean, there are days when we probably all feel like, oh, why are we doing this? But as we trust God, we look at the long picture. We baptize people at the beginning of their lives, typically. It can be done any time. But typically, it's at the beginning. And so there's a long, it's the long picture. It's the long view that we take in uh, our life in Christ. It's just a beginning today. And so we will spend our lives as Christians proclaiming by word and example the good news of God in Christ. We will try and to seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving our neighbors as ourselves. That's not easy. It requires a couple of things. First of all, it requires loving ourselves. It requires looking at our neighbor and seeing wow, there's a spark of God in there. There's a spark of the holy in this person. It doesn't mean they're not going to drive us crazy once in a while, that we're going to have to like absolutely everybody, but we are going to have to acknowledge that in them is the spark of God, a spark of life, just as there is within us. So we seek and serve that spark, that light of Christ in them. Will we strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? We're living in a culture that doesn't do that. We're living in a culture that needs to do that. That's why I'm forever talking to you about breaking in the kingdom of God. That's our job as baptized Christians, to break in that kingdom of God. And we don't have to do it by ourselves. David's looking a little bit uh, anxious. It's not your job only. We're going to help you but you're going to help us just by being you. 
So, in a couple of minutes, we are going to go to the font, and we are going to say a long prayer over the water that rehearses the, the whole history of salvation and the importance of water. So these are very important symbols. We're going to, uh, I'm going to, it's my, it's my job, my privilege, and my, my joy to take oil that's been blessed by our bishop uh, for uh, the purpose of marking and sealing baptisans. The, new, the newly baptized are marked in the, in the spirit with a cross marked as Christ's own forever. Oil that's been blessed by hands that we believe at least spiritually have been touched by the apostles. It's gone down, 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 down from Peter and all the way down to Bishop Provenzano in Garden City. There's an unbroken, at least spiritually unbroken chain there. And so what we do is very important and very ancient. So I hope that gives you a little bit more understanding of why we're gathered here today and what we're going to be doing. So in a, in a moment, we're going to be processing to the font. I'm going to break into a little bit of housekeeping here at the end of my sermon. And hopefully you'll be able, many of you will be able to see the, the action, the font. Those of you who can't, uh, if you want to move closer, you can, or you can watch it on uh, the Jumbotron here because among other things, our, our new, uh, one of our new uh, tech fund things that we promised to have up and running, Teddy got it up and running, it's a new camera that will give you a wonderful view of the, of the uh, baptism. So uh, we begin then another person's spiritual journey. We begin our own spiritual journey again if we choose to if we agree that we will do all that we can with God's help to live into our promises then we are on a wonderful path and so now as we begin I would ask the acolytes to come down and the baptismal family we're going to we're going to process to the font on uh, a hymn, I sing a song of the saints of God.
now the candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. I present David Kamara de la Bennett to receive the sacrament of baptism. David, do you desire to be baptized? Parents and godparents, will you be responsible for seeing that the, li the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will, with God's help. Kneel now Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God. I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. Do you put your all trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. Now, I ask all of us gathered, will all of you who witness these vows do all in your power to support David in his life in Christ? Let us then join with David, who is committing himself to Christ, and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, O Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the life. Will you continue in the Apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Let us now pray for David, who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver David, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open his heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill him with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep him in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach David to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send him into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring David to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. I need a book stand. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death, 
By it we share in His resurrection, through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring Him into His fellowship, all those who come to Him, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that all who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, world without end. Okay, David, come on up. We have quite a wonderful thing happening here this morning. <clears throat> I don't know that we've ever had a double baptism, but, as, but I think you all know, and if you don't, you should, that David is Deacon Marjorie's grandson. So we're going to baptize him together. Okay, so lean way over. David, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son. Of the Son. Of the Son. We didn't rehearse this. <laughs> and of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Up we go. I need to share with you that Father keep asking what I wanted to do. And I said to him, you are the priest. I follow directions, <laughs> so I'm grateful. David, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism. And marked as Christ's own forever. And marked as Christ's own forever. I never get through that. I know that. So I was waiting. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised him to the new life of grace. Sustain him, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give him an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to know and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God, confess the faith of Christ crucified, and proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. If we can get the candle, we can light that. That's a bucket. I'll let you give him the candle. Receive this candle as a reminder that you're the bearer of the light of Christ in the world. And Amen. I say to you, continue to be that light because you have been that light. Okay. Now we're going to lead a parade back down to the front, okay? Got it? We'll take the inside passage here. Arcady?
And also with you. Let us pray each other in the name of the Lord. Okay. okay, you can blow that out. Wow. Please be seated. Nice to have my book magically reappear. It never does that. <laughs> I'm always looking around at the end of a baptism. So welcome again. It is good to be with you uh, to celebrate David's baptism and, of course, to celebrate this 10th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, a couple of announcements. Um, uh, reminded that our summer office hours have moved to Friday mornings. That's old news by now. Uh, we want to have our liturgical gifts. Uh, the altar flowers are given by Paul and Susan Parfrey to the glory of God and in celebration of the wedding anniversaries of James and Laura Parfrey and Ian and Marta Parfrey. Uh, the, there's plenty of availability for liturgical gifts. I believe the, the book is in the narthex. I hope so. If not, we'll get it to you. Uh, so if you would like to sign up for flowers or for one of the candles, uh, please do so. You can also call the church office with that. Uh, I, I wanted to say another word of thanks to everyone who took part in our Tech Fund Telethon uh, Saturday before last. Uh, it was a great success, and if you're watching at home, the view that you got of the baptism, I believe, was mostly from our newest camera. And uh, so, and many thanks to Teddy, who's been uh, spending a lot of time this week making all the wires invisible in the church and installing the camera and just in general doing uh, the magic he does to make our ministry go beyond this room, but way out into the world. So thank you. And thank you to everyone who has taken part in that. Um, it's never too late to make a donation to the Tech Fund. Uh, you can do that online or you can do it uh, by check. Just please make sure that if you do, uh, you mark it for the tech fund so that we'll know where to, uh, where to uh, put your gift. Uh, let's see, and also thank you to uh, Major Tom and all who were involved in last Friday night's coffee house. It's a movable feast, Major Tom's coffee house, uh, but we had a nice turnout uh, for that. And that, that has become really one of our, especially in COVID, that's become one of our primary outreaches for the community because our thrift shop being is closed as it is every summer. Um, but thank you also for the gifts of food that keep coming in and that we get over to uh, the food pantry held at Grace Church. So um, what, have we, what else have we got? I know there's one more thing from the balcony. Yes, are you showing that now or at the end of the service? There is now a highlight reel, which I haven't seen, from the uh, telethon, so uh, thank you, Teddy. And as he's, are you gonna show that be before we do the offertory hymn? Yes. Okay, so take a look towards the Jumbotron. Broadcasting live from the Common Room at All Saints Church in Bayside, Queens, New York, it's the 2021 Christmas in July Telethon. Hello everyone, Merry Christmas in July, the Telethon. And our first of many, maybe, depends on how well we do tonight. We are trying to enrich our technical abilities that have become so important during this time. The Sunday service, the, the other things that we're up to, why are they so important to you and David and your family? And the both of us are doing Sunday school, so we're both awesome. Like listening to the stories, and um, we like the songs that are. This song. The songs Teddy's are great. Song. Teddy's uh, a little, um, his little jingles at the beginning of like arts and crafts and Mrs. Bird. Ah, <laughs> so, every time we hear those songs, we just start laughing and we say, "Oh, Teddy!" I think out of all of that, you know, um, All Saints was still there. Um, you know, the whole pandemic, everything that came with it, it's like a raging flood of stuff happening. To know that we were able to, even from, I think, the first Sunday we went live, 
is just to turn on the TV and or turn on your computer, or your tablet, and see All Saints and to see the images of a place that's so familiar to us. It's like an anchor point in a flood, you know? It's like, yeah, there's waters raging all around you, but you're anchored to this one point. Last year at this time, Teddy and I could only dream about what church school could possibly be like in this year of social distancing. It was very difficult, very daunting to imagine a program for children, but we did. And we came up with something that I think was creative and exciting. And as we move into the future, we hope to use these experiences to expand our program in the future. Oh, hi there. I was just thumbing through my old uh, All Saints Kitchen Classics book here to see if I could get a couple of ideas for uh, things to make for your dinner for six. That particular performance by Diana Gilday was really compelling. Ladies and gentlemen, Diana Gilday. Being the mother of God was a really interesting experience. You know, it's a very high stakes role. I, of course, play, have played higher stake roles. I was the star of my senior musical in high school. Oh my oh, gosh! That's great. Wait, we have reached $1,750, so you know what that means, Father. We reached over 1000 so that means that you the get. I do for this place! Wow. Well, Thank you guys for that, and if you get us to $2,000, Teddy has to dump ice cold water on it. And honestly, seeing Teddy do really stupid things is one of my favorite pastimes, and it should be one of yours. Santa Claus is coming out, ooh, Santa Claus is coming to town. Hey, Father Byrne here for the All Saints Text Fund, and I am all stirred up about getting things going. I deliver this letter of confession to one Father Nigel Polanski, former principal at Chaminade High School on Long Island. I decided I would go ahead and lie, not just once, not even twice, but in a way that it was impossible to count how many lies I was telling. On top of everything else that I did to disappoint you, I would also have to confess that I'd since become an Episcopalian. We have Greg Sullivan ready to tell his most embarrassing secret. Embarrassing moment isn't even finished yet. It gets even worse. Look at her, so beautiful, so beautiful. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I recognize this pot. Oh no, oh no, I'm recognizing this. Oh no, my artwork's gonna get rushed away. Oh no. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> The one and only tech boy. The outpour of support that we've received tonight is unbelievable. Way more than I could have ever imagined. Oh! We have reached $7,600, everyone! That is all, and thanks to you who have been watching here tonight. Thank you so much. We will put this to good use, I promise. It is not all just going to our paycheck. What is that? <laughs> Seen that before, uh, <laughs> but you know, part of All Saints is that as much as we like to do things formally, we like to have fun, and uh, I think a joyful Christian is a much better Christian than a miserable one. <laughs> so there are plenty of those out there, but you won't find them here. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because in Jesus Christ our Lord, you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this, whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. I realize that the announcement, I forgot to mention how we do communion uh, here in COVID tide. All baptized Christians are welcome and encouraged to receive communion. We'll be receiving only the bread uh, at the foot of the steps. If you would just leave your masks on to receive, and then go to whichever side you're sitting on and you may, you'll see marks on the floor and that's where you would uh, remove your mask to consume the host.
I would invite those who are gathered here today to join with those who are gathered online in saying the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you physically, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. And now let us all who have received the grace of this Holy Communion say together, Eternal, Eternal God, God, Heavenly Father, Father you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us in spiritual food, in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. My granddaughter is here from Florida.
and to share with our happy memories. And this is my granddaughter, Shadi, who lives in Florida, that you've been praying for. So keep praying for her and don't stop praying. Okay? Outside, we have a little refreshment because you know we're not supposed to have anything big. So we'll have some cool drink and some uh, cupcakes and pound cake just to sweeten your mouth up before you go home. So know that I love you and I'm glad you're here. God bless you and have a wonderful week. And so go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you.